here, adapting and being flexible has been the reason that I'm still here. The reason that I've been shooting professionally for over 30 years is flexibility. I'm malleable and willing to shift if things aren't working. The first shift that I made was uh, way, way, way back in the early, early beginnings of my career where I wanted to be a fashion photographer. Fashion photography is all that I cared about early. It was all about shooting fashion. And I showed my fashion photography to the Globe and Mail. And the Globe and Mail uh, art director looked at my fashion work and he said, great, here, shoot a portrait. And I went out and shot that portrait and came back and delivered it. And he said, amazing, here, shoot this portrait. And I went and shot that second portrait. And I said to Michael, the art director, when I returned, I said, Michael, you know I'm a fashion photographer, right? And Michael Gregg said this, he said, Cardi, any hack with a camera can take pictures of beautiful girls in beautiful scenarios with beautiful hair, makeup, clothing. It takes a real photographer to photograph the rest of us. What kind of a photographer are you? That one mindset shift where I was a fashion photographer only ended up being the beginning really of my life as a photographer because Michael Gregg, this art director challenged me and I was a quote unquote fashion photographer. If it wasn't for Michael Gregg, I wouldn't have this type of a portfolio where I've shot Pharrell and Daft Punk and Kanon and Sierra and Deepa Mehta and General Romeo Dallaire and Pete Rock and Kanye and Ludacris and Sandra, like all of these editorial portraits that I do come from me first adapting from being a fashion photographer to being a people photographer. That one mentality shift saved my career. It, in fact, actually gave me a career. So that was my first headspace shift. I started teaching and lecturing at photography schools in my third year of business. So I had been teaching my first 10 years. In 2005, 2006, I started doing workshops. That was my next pivot, was teaching photographers one-on-one, -on -one, making small workshops and teaching photographers lighting, transitioning to pro, introduction to digital photography. Like I had six or seven classes that I would do and I did that wholeheartedly for a really long time and it was amazing. That was my next pivot. In 2009, I got a camera that could shoot video. That was the 7D, I do believe. That was the camera, the 7D. Crop sensor, shoots 720 video. That was the camera. And from there, that was my next pivot where I started now adding video as a thing that I could do. Very soon after I started shooting video, I started shooting 60 second portraits, which are living photographs. This is something that I had never seen anybody do before, which was create photographs that actually moved. I thought, what an amazing way to use video where I'm actually, the camera's fixed, my focus is locked, I'm aiming at a subject and I just allow that subject to move within a 60 second space. This type of work now really started like a whole vision of video and fashion and 
photography and actually ended up very quickly getting me campaigns where I'm shooting beauty for cosmetic companies and my exact exact sensibility for my 60 second portraits i'm now filming for skincare brands like the ability to adapt is what all of us need to do as photographers in order to cross over and really really make something of ourselves as photographers. People want to hear from us. If I look back at early video content, if I look back at my first times on camera, it's painful. Most people's first time on camera is going to be painful, but we still have to push through. We still have to try. And I really hope that you feel me when I say how important it is for us to adapt, how important it is for us to be pliable. I'm coming to you from example. I'm coming to you from experience and knowing at any point if I was rigid in my career, I wouldn't have a career. At any point if I refused to add video, if I refused to go from shooting Hasselblad film to shooting digital, which was, by the way, don't you remember? Digital was the end of photography. Do you remember that? We have to adapt as photographers. Transparency is the new meta. That is the whole overarching theme of today's episode. Know that we have to let people in and we can't be rigid. We have to let people inside our closet, open the doors, invite people in, tell them stories. That's what's going to really, really be the thing that takes you to the next level, that takes your marketing to the next level, that takes your photography to the next level. I hope you guys found that inspiring. That really is the mindset shift that you guys all need. I hope that you guys are going to take it to heart and use the things that I talked about today as motivation for you to also be in front of the camera. I hope me telling you my story as far as how I've had to shift and pivot all the way through my 30-year career. And I didn't even get to the point where COVID and I had to pivot and I started streaming live. That was the most recent pivot. I started streaming live. I started streaming on Twitch. I started the show. I added a second show. That was another huge pivot is broadcasting. And, and then from there, really doubling down on YouTube. That was another pivot. So we have to adapt. Adapting and being flexible and being pliable, this is the life of a freelancer because that's what we have to do for our clients continually is adapt and produce. So get used to it.